Well, welcome back, everybody, to Old Testament Survey. In this video, we just kind of want to talk about where we've been and where we're going. Uh, you've done a lot of reading. Uh, you've done some assignments. You watched some videos. Uh, you've received a lot of information and content, and some of it you can understand. Uh, some of it is a bit confusing, and you don't really know how it fits into the Old Testament. We never want to lose sight, though, of the big picture, the big story of what God is doing in the Old Testament, in his redemptive plan to bless the world and to bless the nations. And so we want to remember how each book of the Old Testament and how each section of the Old Testament contributes to God's redemptive story. So here you see the canon of the Old Testament with the four sections of that Protestant canon, the law, the history, the poetry books, and then the prophets. We've already studied the law, or we have, as we've come to call it, the Torah. Uh, and in these books, God sort of sets out his vision for the world. God creates a world of beauty and wisdom and order and structure. He creates the humans, male and female, and God has a role for the humans. He wants the humans to represent him in the world, to rule in his name, to reflect his character into the world. God also wants to show those humans how to live, and so he gives them some of the laws and some of the decrees and rules, as we saw in Exodus and Leviticus. And God says, this is my character. This is how to live the good life, and I want you to live that way as well. And of course, one of the, one of the roles that God has for his people, for Israel, uh, in the Torah, is that he wants them to bless the nations. He wants them to function as God's people in God's world to accomplish God's mission to bless the nations. So the next section of books that we want to look at are these historical books. Uh, and there are many of them. And these historical books sort of go over a thousand-year period of history for the people of Israel. And uh, it kind of charts their progress as living as the people of God in the land that God has provided. In the book of Joshua, the people go into the promised land, and they take up residence. And then they get these various kings in the book of Samuel and kings who are supposed to be representatives and lead the people uh, in, in obeying God and following God's mission. And so this, these, this thousand year period of history in these books kind of shows the tension between obedience and disobedience. Will the people of Israel worship God only? Will they obey God's laws and reflect God's character? Will they be a blessing to the nations as God intended, living in the land and living out God's purpose? Sometimes they succeed, and they do indeed bless the world around them, but mostly they fail. And so that history sort of ends sadly with the people going into exile to Babylon. Well, the next set of books are these poetic books. Uh, and these books uh, talk about Israel's experience with God in living out God's kind of life in a difficult and messed up world. The Psalms talk about how to worship God. How do we express our worship and love to God? Uh, Job talks about suffering. You know, what about suffering in the world? Proverbs talks about how do we acquire wisdom and how do we really grow up and learn God's way? Ecclesiastes talks about our purpose in God's world. Why am I here and what is our purpose? in life. And the book of Songs uh, talks about sexuality and marriage and, and how do we live that out God's way. So the final section of the canon is the prophets. And these prophets are generally working during this history period, especially during the kings. Uh, and the prophets do a couple of things. Number one, they see the failure of the people of Israel and they call the people to repent and come back to God's way of life. Worship God only and not idols. Live out God's character by obeying the laws and not being rebellious and disobedient. And therefore, be a blessing to the nations like God intended. 
So the first thing the prophets do is they call people back to God and call them to repent. But of course, it does end in failure for the people of Israel. So the second thing that the prophets do is they hold out a vision of hope and they make promises about a new king that will come, who will transform the hearts of the people, who will create a new humanity so that God's people can fulfill God's mission to bless the world. And of course, that all leads to Jesus Christ, who is that new king, who does bring about that transformation and restores the purpose of God's people. So it's one big story. Uh, on all of these Old Testament books contribute to that story of God's redemptive mission to bless the world. So here you see that story laid out on a timeline from beginning to end. And all of the Old Testament books and New Testament books uh, fit into this story. Uh, it begins, of course, with God's creation, creating the world and humans, uh, to have the kingly job of ruling the earth. Uh, then, as you know, there's rebellion, and the human beings reject God's goodness. They reject his authority, and they disobey his commandments, and so the world is just a mess. But then in Act 3, God begins his redemptive plan and, and the promise to bless the world, and that all begins with Abraham. In spite of the mess, God's going to bring blessing. He's going to bring blessing to the nations. He's going to bring blessing to the earth. And, of course, the people of Israel in the Old Testament uh, will be the people uh, who will be the channel of God's blessing to the nations. But, of course, if you read all the way to the end of the Old Testament, the people of Israel fail at that mission. Uh, and so the Old Testament sort of ends uh, sort of wondering what next. That, of course, leads to act number four with the coming of Jesus Christ, his birth, his life, his teaching, his death, resurrection, and ascension. And God accomplishes in Jesus what he promised to Abraham to bring blessing to the world, to restore creation, and to abolish death. And, of course, that leads into the rest of the New Testament, which we'll get to uh, in the next semester. So. If we think about the biblical story of mission, we see God has a mission, humanity has a mission, and Old Testament Israel has a mission. God's mission is to create a world of beauty and wisdom and order. And when that all goes wrong because of the human being's disobedience, God begins a plan of redemption. And his mission uh, is to bless the world and create this new creation where we can finally live together with God. And then we see in the Old Testament that humanity has a mission. And that's all tied up with this image of God uh, that we talked about earlier on. Here we see Genesis 1. God creates the humans in his image, and he says, be fruitful, increase in number, fill the earth, and subdue it. That is, rule it. Be my representatives. And so the role and mission of the humans is to take the character of God and sort of reflect that like a mirror into the world. So these blue arrows represent the character of God and the human beings reflecting God's character of the world. The red arrows sort of represent the praises and worship of the world, and the humans bring that back to God. So the role of humans is to reflect God's character into the world and live his life to bless the nations and to take the worship and praises of the world and bring those back to God and lift those up to him. And then we have Old Testament Israel with a mission. And that really is Act 3, God's promise to bless the world. And that prompt that that promise of blessing through Israel really begins with Abraham in Genesis 12. Here you see Genesis 12, God calling Abraham to leave his land and go to the land of Israel, uh, where God will use Abraham and his family to bless the nation. Just want to mention the four promises that summarize what God is doing with Abraham in choosing him or electing him. 
God promises Abraham a land or a place. I'm going to give you a place where you can live out my kind of life to bless the nations. God promises Abraham a great nation, or that is many descendants or many people. There's going to be a people of God who will reflect God's character. And then God says, I'm going to bless you, Abraham. And there's blessing and privilege. And God shows his favor and grace to Abraham and his family to enable them uh, to be a blessing to the nations. But then finally, God tells Abraham that there's a purpose and that the purpose for Abraham and the purpose for God choosing Abraham and his family is to be a blessing to the rest of the world. So Israel's mission begins in Genesis 12 with Abraham and his family uh, to be a blessing to the world. Another major sort of mile post along the way of God's promise in Act 3 and his blessing to the world is the covenant with Moses in Exodus 19. And here you see just a summary of that covenant relationship that God uh, has for his people Israel. God chooses the people. He elects them and he redeems them. Uh, he takes them out of Egypt and calls them to himself. God says, we belong together. You're going to be my people. I'm going to be your God. And then God gives them the law. All these laws that we see in Exodus and Leviticus and even Deuteronomy. God saying, here's how I want you to live. And God says, I give you this law to help you live in ways that will please me and that will be best for your life too. And will also reflect my character to the nations. So these laws that we saw in the Torah are for my sake, for your sake, and also for the world's sake. So in that big story of God's mission in the Old Testament, there are a couple of important texts. We already looked at Genesis 12 and Abraham. That's the first one where God elects Abraham and his family and has a vision for that family of Abraham to bless the nations. The other significant text in the Old Testament is Exodus 19. Uh, sometimes we refer to this as the covenant with Moses. Uh, this is where God comes to the whole nation of Israel after he has delivered them from Egypt uh, to uh, talk about God's purpose for the entire people. Exodus 19 is a key text, uh, sort, of a, sort of a hinge text in the story. Everything before it looks backward. Uh, to God's vision for creation, for creating a people, uh, and for God's vision for that people, uh, and how God redeems the people by grace and saves them. And then everything from Exodus 19 looking forward talks about God's mission for those people and what they will do in God's world. So Exodus 19 is important. It begins, see what I have done for you in Egypt. So it begins with God's grace. I carried you on eagle's wings. I brought you to myself. I saved you by grace. And then if you obey me, and if you keep my covenant, and you live out that life that I've given you in those laws, then you will have this special privilege. And let me just break these, uh, these verses down in Exodus 19. Uh, the P stands for God's particular statement about the people of Israel. It begins, and there's a particular statement at the end, and then in between are these universal statements about the whole world. Uh, so God talks about his people, Israel in particular, in the setting of his plan for the whole world, among all peoples, and the whole earth belongs to me. So God says, if you obey my covenant, then you'll get to be my special possession. You'll have a special status. You'll be my blessed people, and I will pour out my grace and favor on you if you keep my covenant. It's not that if you keep my covenant, you get to be my people, but if you keep my covenant, I will bless you with this special status. And then that last phrase that particular phrase for the people of Israel talks about their special role in God's world. 
to be a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. A, a holy nation uh, refers to uh, being holy as God's people, living out God's life in those laws and obeying him and therefore reflecting his character. The priestly kingdom uh, speaks to Israel's role to the nations. Uh, the priests really did two things. They, they would teach the Torah to the people, and they would secondly handle the sacrifices and lead the people in worship of God. So here what God is saying to Israel is that the whole nation will be priests. They'll be mediators. They'll be go-betweens between God and the nations. Now the whole nation of Israel will teach the Torah to the nations. The whole nation of Israel will lead the nations in the worship of the one true God. So the people of Israel will function as God's mediators or God's go-betweens. They will teach the nations and they will lead the nations in worship. So Genesis 12 and Exodus 19, Abraham and Moses are two significant texts in the Old Testament uh, in that big story of God. Let me just bring up also this verse from Deuteronomy. Uh, Deuteronomy, as we found out, is, is sort of Moses reminding the people of God's law and what that law meant for the people. Notice the, the mission, uh, even in the laws that God gives. Moses says to the people, I have taught you these decrees and these laws. You should observe them carefully, for this will show your wisdom and understanding to the nations. And then the nations will hear about these laws and decrees and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. What other nation is so great as to have their gods near them the way the Lord our God is near us whenever we pray to him? And what other nation is so great as to have such righteous decrees and laws as this body of laws I am setting before you today? So God has a missionary vision for his people Israel, even in the giving of the law, they're supposed to obey the laws. Why? So that the nations will see it and be witnesses uh, to Israel, reflecting the character of God, and that the nations will say, what a great God you have. He's a wise God. He's a caring God. We want to serve this God too. So don't miss the big story of the Old Testament. Creation, humanity's role, uh, in, in God's plan and kingly rule of the earth, and then God's particular mission for Israel through Abraham's family and the nation of Israel to be a channel of God's blessing to the nations. So the law, the history, the poetry books, and the prophets all contribute to that big story. And next, we want to move into looking at these history books uh, and the tension that Israel experiencing, uh, experiences in sometimes obeying God and living out that redemptive purpose and mostly disobeying God uh, and sort of working against that purpose. So we're going to go on next to the history books of the Old Testament.